I finished my law school in 2012 and in my final year of law school when I was deciding what to do for my masters I went out and met a lot of professionals just to figure out which line I wanted to go in during that time I I met uh, NC Mehta he's one of the pioneers of environmental law in India. In fact, he's the reason why we are taught environmental law in law schools in India. And he told me a story about how he came about filing a case about Taj, uh, Taj Mahal, and it's getting yellow. And I just realized that there are so many things that happen for an environmental case to come to light and then to have a good judgment out of it. There's so many, there are myriad of subjects that range from macroeconomics to humanities to science and all of that together makes an environmental case. And the battle is as much as it is inside the court, getting a good judgment, it is equally important to go outside the court. Um, So I grew up in a rural area um, and I grew up on a farm. I spent a lot of my childhood out and about taking bike rides on back roads and like exploring the Bruce Trail and just being in the outdoors quite a bit. Um, It was uh, such an incredible gift because having spent most of my adult life in an urban center, I do miss sort of that ease of access um, to the environment and I realize uh, into nature and I realize how lucky that I, I was at the time. And so there's sort of like this longing for it um, and a desire to want to protect it as well. When I I think of environmental protection and conservation, I think about it very much through an Indigenous paradigm. My background, I'm Black Métis, so that very much informs my worldview and how I see the world and how I see my responsibilities to the environment and to others. That's where my passion for the environment stemmed from, even though I I don't think I was cognizant of it. as it was forming and as it was developing. It was sort of just, I think, a gift as a result of how I was situated in life. I was raised in the suburbs of Southern Ontario, but I grew up spending all of my summers with my grandparents in rural New Brunswick. And those are really some of my fondest memories. Um, We would spend weeks swimming and canoeing in the river by my grandparents' house and playing in the woods behind their home. And when we were there, my dad really took it upon himself to make sure that my brother and I built a strong connection with the natural world. Um, I remember him pulling us out of bed in the middle of the night to go look at the star-filled sky because it wasn't something that we had at home. It's really those small moments growing up that really instilled a love of the environment in me. And those are really kind of the small things that I still make an effort to do every day to connect with my surroundings and remember why I do this work. Tila's work goes way beyond providing just services of a legal aid clinic. Uh, they have a wonderful team of experienced and driven professionals, and uh, they have the power to create that impact not only for the clients that they take, but also at a much level, uh, you know, larger level. And getting that opportunity to be actively involved in not only environmental reform, but also legislation is the best experience that I could ask for. I have been an environmental lawyer for a number of years, and I'm aware of the importance that environmental justice holds in the fight to safeguard environment. And I could see that in SELA. So every action of SELA may be recommendations that they used to make to the government regarding policies or the cases that that they used to take up. Everything reflected environmental justice. And and I applied to SELA because um, I'm very passionate about Aboriginal law. And at the time when I was looking at the different work placement employers, there wasn't many in the way of uh, Aboriginal law and Aboriginal practice. But um, I came across the Canadian Environmental Law Association. And while their primary area of practice is obviously environmental law, um, Aboriginal law intersects quite a bit with environmental law. Um, so, uh, that was sort of my, um, I think my in, so to speak, in terms of, um, it, it pro- provided for me like a green light to apply. Um, the work SELA does was exactly why I went to law school in the first place. So I reached out and started volunteering after my first year of school. Um, that experience was so enriching to me. Uh, and so it was really a dream come true that I got to complete my articling term with SELA and that I've been able to continue working here in varying capacities ever since. The 
my experience at sila was wonderful and they have actually made me set a very high benchmark about what kind of team i want to work with in the future and what kind of office i want to be a part of so that i'll take two lessons uh, one was finding the right balance between being empathetic and compassionate as a professional so there's a thin line when you empathize so much you might like i understand what the person wants but i might not deliver and then when you get compassionate you deliver so that thin line i learned a lot by looking at everybody and how they reacted to various issues that came up during my articling the second lesson was valuing myself as an individual and realizing where my strengths are i think my role as an articling student also taught me a lot in an indirect manner so as an articling student we often engage in summary advice service and i think this particular uh, experience just in taking and summary advice this service perf- this service perfectly explains what sila taught me about environmental justice that it does not mean that all be treated equally it just that everybody needs a tailored situation tailored uh, solution for their own community i think really the importance of um relationships and the centrality of relationships in a work environment generally speaking but i think in particular in the work that sila does um you know they're a legal aid clinic and so they often work with a lot of um vulnerable and underprivileged uh populations and i think members from those communities may sort of see the law as like this thing that's hard to comprehend and that's inaccessible and a bit terrifying I I just found it how important it was given you know that I was generally the point of first contact for a lot of these people how important it was was just to have a very like understanding demeanor um very understanding very open um very kind and really work at the relationship element of the work that they they do um because I think it's through that avenue that they they help to make law accessible. What I learned very quickly, <laughs> see the lawyers wear many many hats. Um they're not just lawyers. The populations that they work with they're often also fulfilling so many other roles. Um because their clients may be undercapacitated, they're also project managers or um having to or p- fulfilling administrative tasks as well. um in addition to doing sort of your traditional you know legal analysis and thinking and writing um so it requires i think a very a varied skill set and that's definitely something that i've taken on into my other work um working at sila has really taught me the importance of taking a multifaceted approach to environmental justice work Um while the more traditional legal work or litigation certainly has its place, I think real social change most often comes from the ground up or the people up. Um so it's equally important that we engage with politicians to shape what our environmental laws and regulations actually look like. And then most importantly, uh it's critical that we get out into the communities we represent to provide public legal education, build their capacity, and give them the tools they need to understand and advocate for their rights. Probably the most important thing I've learned while at Sila is the value of persistence. Um environmental laws are very slow moving and it can often take decades to affect meaningful change on the ground. Um but what I admire so much about the legal team and staff at Sila is that they never give up. they care so much about the individuals and communities we represent and aren't afraid to get creative in their approach and they're endlessly optimistic in their pursuit of solutions